USC's MO has been to shut down the run first and then kind of pressure the quarterback, but they did lose two of their best linebackers against Colorado against Colorado. They have two guys who haven't really played that position now filling in. What kind of offensive balance do you think that you guys can strike with your running backs playing so well right now? Well, we'll certainly find out. Yeah, I mean that was it was really unfortunate, especially looking looking seeing how uh, uh, Lamar Dawson. I, I mean that it's one of those things that that just stinks uh, about this this game and those guys. Those guys are both phenomenal players. Played extremely well for them. Um, unfortunately, they have really talented guys behind them. As far you know, from from our standpoint, unfortunately, um, that have played a ton. Um, whether it's you know a combination of linebackers or Sewell Cravens has gone in there and, and played some inside linebacker, they, they're, I mean they're so, so deep and talented that they're not gonna, uh, you know make some drastic change. And they've they've had enough personnel movement. Whether it's uh, nickel group, a dime group, all all the things that they normally do, they're gonna they're gonna do their deal. And so again, that's where we kind of need to do our deal. And we obviously want to try to run the football and and um, play action pass and all the things that that we've done. Um, and, and, you know, see if we can get something going. Mark, we were talking to Vernon just a bit ago, and he was talking about practice today and how he was emphasizing and, and getting the guys motivated. Can you maybe, and maybe maturation isn't the word, can maybe, maybe talk about his impetus of, of really taking charge of this offense and, and pushing the guys and not just in practice, but also in the games? Um, yeah, I mean, I think he's he's getting more confidence in in what what uh, you know he's doing, which is which is then uh, filters down to to everybody else, um, and then then um, I'm not sure exactly what what you're talking about from today exactly, but but uh, yeah, I thought we had uh, particularly offensively, I thought we had good energy and 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 for uh, this type of game plan, pretty good pretty good execution for a, for a Tuesday. Um, but yeah, I think, I think the more, you more, you know, hopefully the more you do something, the, more, the better you do it, the more confident you are and that kind of, kind of snowballs. That's what he said, that there was more energy and he was, he got the guys going, he was up and, and getting the guys pushing harder. Good. Yeah. No, I mean that, that, that's, we always kind of, our, our little phrase is there's no off position on the quarterback switch. You know, you have to be on every single day for, for your team to go. Uh, if, if you throw it in the, you know, perfect spot and the receiver's six inches off, everybody knows that the, you know, the receiver was wrong type deal. And so that, that's something that, that it just makes everything better when, when you can, that guy's a, a rock and he's, he's working toward that, that status. Andrew? Any discernible difference on the tape between what a Clay Helton led Trojans team likes to do versus a Sarkeesian team in terms of uh, the way they attack teams offensively or defensively? Well, I mean, they're, they're, I don't think there's a, uh, any, discernible strategic difference you know I think they want to uh, you know very, very again very similar to us offensively in terms of wanting to run the ball and launch and and they've got you know <laughs> weapon after weapon after weapon that, that they can unleash um, whether it's the you know quick game screen game off off of you know bubble screens or run game screen game um, uh, being able to to pound it with with multiple you know, multiple running backs. Kessler, highly efficient, um, accurate guy. And then again, pick your pick your poison on on the weapons. Uh, and so, I don't I don't think there's, you know, uh, get the ball to your weapons, attack the run, and and get the ball to a Dory Jackson somehow. You know, whether it's a return game, offensively, defensively, uh, it's it's a they've got a ton of talent. Coach Lubick was saying one one of the reasons why Darren is having so much success kind of coming out of missing so much time is just the the conditioning he kept himself in. He said he's one of the better conditioned receivers he may have ever had. Just what was that process like when he had to miss those games just to kind of keep him? Was he pretty self-motivated and keeping himself in shape? He was just integrated, you know, and I think that was something that was was big. Sometimes guys, when whatever it is, you know, an injury or they're not exactly where they want to be on the depth chart, some of those guys – for lack of a better word, tank it. Uh, not you know, not completely, but to some degree. Uh, and he did a, a really good job of staying in it with with the the kind of the travel guys, the the travel you know the 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 ones and twos. But then he also went to scout team for a, a ton of, of team periods, and so gave them a, a great look for for you know the opponent, and also stayed in stayed in shape. 
USC had a couple of years where they could only sign, I think, 27 guys over two years, 2012, 2013. Can you tell at all if that's impacted their depth? And, and then also, can you imagine how difficult it would be if you had to go through that situation where you can only sign that many guys over two years and how that would impact your squad? Well, there's cer- it's certainly an impact in some way, and and you know for us it would be different than than for them. Uh, but yeah, they're they're they are extremely talented. I mean, the the like I said yesterday or whenever I don't even know what date is at this point, but but you flip on the tape and it's really fast, and they're big dudes doing it. You know, highly athletic, well coached uh, guys, and and you know their their threes are all you know, five star all American type guys and, and, and uh they're all at SC for a reason and 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 uh you know, again, highly talented, highly skilled guys. So no sympathy. No sympathy, no. <laughs> Oftentimes after a big win, a team can maybe come back the next week and and not play as well. Um, do you believe in a hangover effect? Like, is that real? And how do you guard against that going into the USC game? Aaron, on a Saturday night, there's a hangover effect some some way. It's, no, a different Aaron. Thinking of a different Aaron. Um, uh, sure, that that can that can happen. Um, again, you you, you have to. Uh, it could be a win, could be a loss. Something you know, highly emotional one way or the other you see some teams around the country that 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 lose two in a row or you know a huge win and come back the next week but yeah absolutely you you talk about those things and and again focus on what's next not what's lost or what you think you may have accomplished what's next and and I think again our coaches have done a good job that our players have done a good job of that uh thus far um have to put together a you know complete week and, and a complete game to 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 get this done but I haven't seen anybody you know walk around patting anybody on the back and we can, you know, put it in chill mode. On Sunday, you said you have a lot of familiarity with USC, even though you haven't played them in three years uh, because of recruiting in part. How often do you guys overlap on the recruiting trail with the USC staff? And, and when was there a last time you recall that happening or bumped into each other? Um, not really, not that much from a staff perspective. Um, uh, well, uh, we were we were at a camp. There, were, I can't remember exactly how many of their guys and how many of our guys. Three or four guys at at the at the Hawaii uh, camp this summer. So a bunch of you know uh, interaction that way, I guess. Um, but then more more so just of yeah the players and then schematically, I think we're similar on on both sides of the ball. Um, uh, and so you know, there's just familiarity that way, and 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 knowing some of the, you know knowing some of their coaches for a while, all those things. Kristen? On Sunday, you kind of referred to Adoree, Jack- Adoree Jackson as being kind of the Charles Nelson of USC because he plays so way- so many ways. Uh, how do you think him offensively, how do you see him, guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, even though he is kind of banged up, matching up with, with your secondary? Um, it's a huge challenge. You know, uh, of that's where you again you just have to pick your spots of because you have to stop the run, first of all, just, to, just how, uh, and again, they can kind of you know, there's Davis, there's, there's, um, Arnold Johnson, there's Madden, there's, you know, there's, again, it's pick your poison there, but you got to stop that first. Um, but then when you, when you stop that, now you've got one-on-one somewhere and that's what they do a great job of, of, uh, play action, um, and then a one-on-one matchup and, and they create some very difficult X versus O type of, of scenarios for a lot of people. Um, and, and, you know, our guys are improving, getting better, and, and we'll be excited for, you know, for that challenge. You, you kind of talked about it with overlapping, recruiting the same guys with USC. Um, what's been, I guess, your biggest hurdle from convincing those guys to come here instead of staying there? Well, I, I, you know, there's the tradition of SC, and that that's understandable and, and fine, but we, we certainly like the guys that we've ended up with. Um, and And... You know, we never want to get kind of in the convincing game. We want to get in the want to be here match game, um, and 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 uh, you know that that's worked out okay. That's kind of that weird weird uh, line that you get on. You talked on Sunday about the importance of the scout team. What makes a good scout team player? 
be be great at your job. It's just like being the you know, it's like being the tailback or being the the wide out or the the linebacker uh, of of being resilient. Uh, those guys, uh, you know, last week especially the offensive line took every single rep uh, of 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 team periods where, you know, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll get, if I receiver, you'll get a little, little bit of blow or whatever, but to, to block DeForest Buckner for, you know, an hour and a half, that's, it's not a lot of fun. Um, by the same token, to be a defensive lineman and do the same against, you know, whoever, that's not a lot of fun, but to, to, to just, and then do your, do your job that's different every week. Uh, your technique is, is slightly different. And to do the nuances of, of, for instance, this week, USC's whatever, line games, their, their twist games versus how Stanford did it to, to, to just those little nuances of that that are technically different is huge. Um, you know, how the safety is aligned that's, you know, might be slightly different than how we do it or how team A, B, or C does it each week. It, and just, again, committing to that role and being great at it is, is huge. So whoever that describes. Tyson? I know you're always very braggadocious about your playing career and talk about it all the time, but... Did uh, did you did you ever have a receiver that you had you know better chemistry with than others? I mean, how, how did you you know when you were in that position? How did that well, kind of develop? As you well know, my only chemistry was with the DBs. I had great chemistry with the opposing DBs. Um, yeah, there's always those guys that you have. Um, you, you know that little feel for of of just eye contact of 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 where they're going to go and what they're going to do, um, and you you have you know that that little feel for it's kind of like. Um, you know, playing basketball and, you know, when somebody's going to make a backdoor cut versus, you know, sliding out to the three point line, McNamara, he'll be out of three point line. Mosley will be in the block. He'll be doing, doing the dirty work. No. Anything else? That, that, <laughs> just one. Warren? Yeah. That demands a follow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How good is Mosley in the block? <laughs> Please don't be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yesterday, Coach Frost talked about the tempo of the game against Stanford. Um, it really looked like that was the organ of old, how it was, it always has been a weapon. Is this team, is the tempo now where you would like to see it? I mean, you always say you want to get better, but are you close? No, (laughs) no. Um, and part of that, part of that is our fault, our fault in quotes of, of, our game planning stuff of, of, you know, a little bit more motion, a little bit more nuanced stuff. You can't, you can't go as fast. Um, uh, and, and, but then that also helps, you know, to, to some end. Um, but, but at times it was, it was okay. Um, but, but not, not where we need to be. Um, and, and, you know, that may or may not be something that we employ this week. Um, you know, just depends. <laughs> 